Hello and welcome to week four in biopsychology and we're getting deep now, deep into the details, the building blocks of the nervous system down to the synapse. The synapse being that space in between neurons where we see some pretty interesting biology, chemistry, and ultimately electricity involved in the communication from one cell to another. You're being introduced essentially to the concept of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters, as the word may suggest, are chemicals that are released from the presynaptic neuron, travel across the synapse, and connect to receptors on the surface of the postsynaptic. Now, those chemicals, when they adhere to the postsynaptic membrane, will either activate or deactivate or block or trigger or something on the postsynaptic neuron, and that will result collectively in whether or not that particular next neuron down the path ends up firing. Now, those chemicals neuropronephrine, acetylcholine, all of those different ones that you're going to experience in the textbook particularly, those chemicals have what is called a stereochemistry to them. And that means they're in a particular shape. That shape is what matches into the receptor on the postsynaptic neuron. So it works very much like a key, has a particular shape and it goes over, you stick a key in the door and it unlocks or doesn't, or maybe it jams it, or maybe it locks it, depending on the nature between the key and the lock itself. So I want you to imagine these funky shaped chemicals traveling across the synaptic gap bumping into the neuron on the postsynaptic surface and finding ways to insert themselves into that lock. Now, the shape of those chemicals is key because the lock is created to be responsive to that shape the way the lock is created to be responsive to a particular shaped key. Now, when we use medications, psychotropic medications, to affect the mind, we design those to be similar in shape, the original neurotransmitters. And in their presence, we increase the volume of that particular effect. So if there are neurotransmitters that will inhibit the next neuron from traveling along, and we want more of that, we would create a drug that looks like that neurotransmitter physically and will also fit into the same receptors that it would. And it increases the slowing down effect that that neurotransmitter has in that particular part of the body. All chemicals in medications have shapes that are similar to neurotransmitters all of them have some degree of effect on the nervous system. When we take medicine for our stomach, that medicine goes to our stomach, but it also goes throughout our body. And usually when a medicine, I must, I would, I must think all the time, when a medicine is released to the public, research has been done on the psychoaffective, meaning how does this medication affect the psyche? So when you look at the details of a particular over-the-counter drug, for example, you can look up the psychoaffective results of taking that drug, whether it's baby aspirin, NyQuil, whatever, cough medicine, all of those, they all have psychoactive effects. So as you're learning about this in the discussion, I'm having you look up over-the-counter meds. Look up more than one. It can be fun. You know, what is, look, open up your medicine cabinet, go through, look them up, 
and detail out how they affect the nervous system, even though you're taking them for something else. It's important to understand these things because that's sometimes very much the effect of what is being sold. Pain relievers actually inhibit the transmission in pain neurons, but that same inhibition also affects parts of the brain for coordination. So when you're taking painkillers, you have to be careful that you don't operate chainsaws because your coordination is a little off. For the same reason that stopping the pain, it's stopping the quick transmission of reaction time so you could you manage that power tool. So you'll often see that warning. In this discussion and in the quiz, I don't want you to just be light. I want you to do the research as to what is the chemistry. What is going on? Go deep. Look it up. Go and if you look up aspirin, look at how that particular chemical, what does it actually do in the nervous system? What neurotransmitter is it like? What happens at the synapse? That's what I want. I don't want the description that I just gave you. You know, it affects the slowing down in the nervous system and I can't use power tools. Even though I use that as an example of the effect, I want you to go right into the nervous system about that. How does it do that? What is the chemical, what is the active chemical in aspirin that actually brings about that particular response and how does that work at the synapse? This will also apply in the quiz. The quiz has four questions. The first one is for you to describe in detail the biochemical electrical process of a neuron firing. There's a lot of detail. I'm saying a brief. A brief is a paragraph, a pretty long paragraph. I'm not asking for a paper, but I'm asking for you to go through the details, including all of the things in your own words, how a neuron fires. The action potential, ion channels, neurotransmitters, the function of the myelin sheath, all of that stuff, that needs to be in your answer. When you're looking at the three drugs, I'm having you look at marijuana, alcohol, and methadone. You are looking that up at the neurotransmitter level. Not the gross level, not how it makes a person feel. That feeling is secondary, it's caused by the changes in the nervous system. I want you to go deep into that and tell me what is the active chemical in marijuana? What does it do at the synapse? What is it, where does it affect? What parts of the brain do we feel those effects? What, what happens to other parts of the body? Remember, we might have a cognitive effect of a drug like marijuana, but we also have a muscular effect or a digestive effect. I mean, the, the drug is everywhere. So whatever it's doing up in my brain, it's doing in other parts of my body as well. So getting in touch with that notion that drugs affect us at the synapse, that's gonna be the focus of this particular chapter. So make sure you go into that detail. That's what I'll be looking for when I start grading. This is also a very cool journey into the chemistry of the nervous system and how we design drugs. In fact, you probably heard the term designer drugs and that comes from the notion of scientists and chemists using their understanding of stereochemistry to create drugs that produce a specific effect. They're designer drugs. The whole pharmaceutical industry is a designer drug industry. We design drugs to imitate particular chemicals in our body we add those chemicals and they produce an effect, a desired effect, along with some maybe undesirable effects like side effects as they call them. So take a look, go deep, make sure you go into that detail. That's what this is all about. That's what separates biopsychology from the same discussion we might have when we study biopsychology in introduction to psych. It's a little lighter, now we're going deep. So looking forward to that deep journey with you and have a great week.